Hallelujah. If you've got your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Romans. I'm ringing. Let's fix my ring, please. Romans chapter 10, verse 8. I want to get to a place today as we spend time in the Word. There's nothing like His presence. But His Word is powerful. Amen. And uh, His Word is true. And so we're going to get into the word of the Lord together. Now, I'm teaching, and we've been dealing on the subject, who you are. Become who you are. And I want to carry on on this, but what I felt today, I felt to do it this way today, I want to back up a little bit. And I want to get to Faith 101. I want to get into something today and I'm going to, I'm going to go on a particular direction as we can over the next little season as we keep on the focus of become who we are. But the Bible says in Romans 10 verse 8, the word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. The Word of God, the Word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart, that is the Word of faith which we preach. Now, as the recent days, there's been a lot of stuff that people have been saying and preachers have been preaching which is a lot of junk. There's a lot of things that are being said. There's a lot of, I I mean, you know, between us, Pastor Steve and myself, we'll hear something and we'll listen. We say, did he really just say that? Did he really just allow that to come out of his mouth because of the incorrect doctrine pertaining to faith? The lack of understanding pertaining to faith. Where a lot of preachers have been preaching, well, you, you know, in certain movements and in certain groups, will preach doubt, will preach unbelief, will preach things that we say, hold on, that doesn't line up with my Bible. That's not what my word says. Now, I, I don't, don't get me wrong. I, I don't mean to be critical. I don't want to judge. That, that's not. But, but what, what, I've, what I want you to understand is when you know the word of faith, when the word of faith is on the inside of you and you know who you are, On the inside of you, everything changes in your life. When you get that revelation of the word of faith on the inside of you, it it, it all changes. That's that's what the Apostle Paul wrote in his letter to the Romans. He says, listen, I I, I can no longer listen to faithless messages by by religious people. You, you, You need to understand, I need faith. This is what it's about. The message of faith is who we are as a church. And linked with that faith is a move of the presence of God, the Holy Spirit, where we allow more than anything God's Word to come into our heart, touch us, change us. Pastor Nicky right now, my good friend, is on his third week of revival. Something's just breaking out in his church back home. And um, I nearly changed my flight from from Amsterdam to go to South Africa. And I was going to write you a a letter like Paul wrote to the church, Dear Church in Naples, I will will tarry here a while and then I will be back with you. And I was going to use all these words, but I thought I got to come back home. All right, because because God wants to do something here. I, I've got an expectancy in these next 21 days of what God is going to do. I, I'm believing. Listen, I'm going to come down there and shake some of you if you don't get excited with me. If you don't get happy with me, God's about to do something. God's about to move in this house. God's about to explode this house. God's about to, to have a mighty, mighty outbreaking right here. I feel it on the inside of me. I know it. I, I got on, on, on the phone with my good friend, Dr. Rodney Howard Brown. This week I was talking to him and uh, we were just talking about a lot of things. And, and I said to him, I said, Rod, please, you've got to come to our church. I said, we've got about 100 people. 
I said, we can seat maybe 250 with a squeeze. Would you come? He says, well, maybe we'll have to have two services. He said to me, he said, but I'll come. I'll come. I, I, I want you to understand. I want you to understand God is doing something and we are right in the, in the middle of it all. We are right in the place of, of an excitement of what the Lord wants to do right here. All right, and, 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 and you've got to understand that, that tradition and, 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 and the things that uh, religion didn't save me, faith did. All right, I, I'm, I'm wanting to talk about faith 101. I'm wanting to get into this because this is who we are. Uh, religious tradition doesn't heal me. Uh, religion does nothing for me. I, I can be religious, but too many of the church are just religious. And, and it's not about religion. What we want, this is about faith. Religious tradition didn't deliver me out of poverty. It didn't, it didn't uh, uh, bring God's blessing on my life. That's what faith did. That's the message of faith. Religious tradition has no power. There, there's nothing that can, can operate. There's no positive change on any life. But the message of faith. It's only by living by faith. It's only by walking by faith. It's only by operating in, in a way where we maintain everything that God has for us and His blessing over our life. So whether you're new to the word of faith and there's so many of you visiting and, and with us and welcome to Faith Church, but maybe this is your first time here or, 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 or maybe uh, you, you, you've been in the faith walk a long time, but, but I believe that God's word today wants to revitalize something in the area of faith within your heart. Because that's how we know who we are in Christ. That's how we become who we are. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. This is not a one-time faith coming to me and Lord Jesus save me. No, the just live by faith. In other words, everything. Uh, faith is, is you've you, you got to understand that uh, it describes the word of faith as a, as a movement. Uh, th this, is, this is not just a passing fad. This is not just something that, um, uh, you, you, you know, that we're just going to do. No, this is who we are. We are faith. I, I want you to understand this. If faith were a movement, it'll come and go. Now, faith might be a movement in many people's hearts where it comes and goes. But faith's not. Faith is the Word of God. All right? And I want you to understand, God didn't just send His Son to die for us, that our faith in Him and in His Word would come and go some way. No. Look what the Scripture says. Look what Hebrews 12 verse 2 says. For the Bible speaks of Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Now look, look what the, he, Hebrews 12, 2, look what the Amplified Bible says. All right, it says it like this. Okay, Jesus, who is the author and perfecter of our faith, look at that, the first incentive, look there, for our belief. And he's also the finisher bringing it to maturity and perfection. He, for the joy of obtaining the prize that was set before him, endured the cross, despising and ignoring the shame, and is now seated at the right hand of the throne of God. In other words, Jesus went through it all. He went into this place of going to the cross that you and I can know who we are. That's what I want you to understand. He completed the work. Jesus did it all on the cross. He did it all. There was never a departure from faith. He went to the cross. He paid the price. He did it. Now, now the book of Hebrews, now th there's another verse in Hebrews 10, verse 38 and 39. It says this, Now the just shall live by faith, but if anyone draws back, my soul will have no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who draw back. Say, but we are not. Come, come, say it with me. Look what the Bible says. But we are not of those who draw back. No, no, say it like you mean it. Come on, this side's very quiet on me over here. Okay, children, say, say, we are not of those who draw back. Because I want you to understand, look, we are not of those that draw back, but of those who believe 
to the saving of the soul. In other words, hold on. This is what faith is all about. I will not quit. I will not give up. I will not uh, just, just, just have a moment. I might have a moment of weakness. All right, I might have a moment where I, oh, I don't feel like walking in faith today, but that we can't ever be in that place. We have to constantly be in a place of absolute 100% faith. When you know who you are, no one can change that. When you know who you are in Christ and in the message of what He's done on the cross of Calvary operating on the inside of you, and the message of faith is so strong on the inside of you, everything about your life has to be, has to be first and foremost on point, on focus, and not allow myself to be drawn back. That's what I love about Jenny. When I'm weak, she's strong. When she's weak, I'm strong. We got each other. Come on, we got each other to say, hey, hold on, hey, sort this out. Come on, you're doubting. You got fear on the inside of you. There, there, there are things that are, are happening which I realize are not faith. Okay, they, they're not faith. And, and there'll, be, there'll be a moment, there'll be a moment in time. And, 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 and I, I mean, even this week, I, I, got, I got mad. I got mad this week. I, I mean, I took my boat for repairs and I got mad. I have to be honest, I got mad. Now, my boat was under warranty and there were problems with it. So I took it, but they couldn't take it in the time of the warranty. And uh, the warranties expired, but it was all reported prior to the warranty. And now they tell me, no, it's not under warranty. Okay, and, uh, and, and they wouldn't work on the boat unless you put a credit card down. So you've got to put a credit card down in order for them to work on the boat, but the boat's under warranty, but because it's out of the, because I couldn't get it to them during the warranty, which they, these are ongoing issues, you know, with the boat. It's not like new things. So I get, eventually I get the boat there, I give them the credit card, I'm telling them it's under warranty. They fix what they needed to, under warranty, and as I'm leaving, with the boat. So I'm going to pick up the boat again. I climb on the boat. I'm going to take it home on Friday late afternoon. So we've got it for the weekend and I'm, and I'm taking the boat home. And, and as I climb on my boat, my one major screen, my one uh, entire vessel view screen that runs my engines and, and everything, the whole screen just not working. I said to them, I brought the boat to you. It was working. I drove it here personally. I gave it to you in working condition. I said, now the screen's not working. Now the screen's not working. They said, no, those things just happen. <laughs> those, those, things, those things just happen. I, 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 got, I got a little bit of righteous... Now, you, you've got to understand on the inside of me. Now, I'm human. I'm normal. I'm like you. But, man, I brought my boat working to you. <laughs> there was nothing wrong with the screen. Well, well we, we, we can fix it. We'll swap it out. They climb on someone else's boat. They take the screen off his boat. They put it on my boat. <laughs> it's fixed. They say it's fixed. I'm watching this unfold. I'm saying... Am I in a movie? No way, I'm going to tell you the best part of it. They put the screen on, they say it's fixed. They say, oh, by the way, that screen, just so you know, is 3,000 US dollars. For that screen, you've got to pay for it. I said, you kidding me? So I got a little bit heated, politely, kindly, whatever you want to call it. And um, so I'm, 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 I'm heading back in the Gulf, back home with my boat. The phone rings. It's the big, well, one of the managers there. Well, you know, you got upset with my guys fixing your screen. I said, you're right, I did. I said, I said, I said, number one, I don't ever cuss. So I understand that. But I'm allowed to say what I have to say. And you either take it or you leave it. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like you, my boat came here with the screen. Working. Now it's not working then you got the right to tell me that's 3,000 US dollars to put a new screen in. Now, it's a, quite a complicated screen, but they said, yeah, those things happen. They go on the phone to me. So I said, I'll come see you Monday. I'm not paying for that screen. I'm going to come see. I get home, 9 p.m. that night. Ka-ching! 
My phone goes off an alert on my phone. They've swiped my credit card for the full amount of the screen. 9 p.m. on Friday night. Now let me tell you. Let me tell you something. I had a rough night. You, 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 you understand. I, I, I had a rough night. Now you've you got to understand. Every bit of faith on the inside of you wants to go out. You know what I'm saying. You, you want to get in the flesh. You want to get a little bit, you, 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 you know, you want to sin a little bit. You, you, you know, you want to get a little bit in the natural. You want to just, you know, have some words to say. I mean, this is not a joke. This is, this is like real. And, and I came to realize that, that it's things like that that will come into your life and, and try and break you down. Try and get you to a point of, of just absolute causing chaos in your life, the enemy's plan and tactic is to be able to get into those type of areas of your life because that's the kind of thing. I love my boat. Like you can mess with many other things, but don't mess with my boat. Are, are, are you with me? Are you with me? I mean, we've all got things. It's like, you know, some of you might like your garden. And, you know, if I drive over your grass, you get upset with me. Okay? Or, or something like that. But, but that's, that's the, 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 the beautiful thing. So when you get to this place in your life and you, and you start to realize that faith is, is not just for a portion of your life. It's got to be operating in every area of your life. And I'm preparing this message on Saturday and I'm thinking about my boat. And the Lord says, Andre, am I not bigger than $3,000? Am I, am, I am I not greater than $3,000? To me, now you look at that and you say, $3,000, my Lord, that's a lot of money. It is a lot of money, even to me. But the point of the matter is that my faith has to be in Jehovah Jireh, my provider, in every area of my life. Whether they're right or wrong is not the issue. It's got, that, that's not even the point of discussion. You can't feel sorry for me. No, you can't do that. The point of the issue here that I'm talking about is even in circumstances where anger comes upon me, even in circumstances when frustration comes upon you, even in circumstances when doubt and fear get a hold of your life and anxiety grabs a hold of you, in all of that, you have to know, hold on, this is who I am. I'm a child of the King of Kings. I know who I am in Christ. And I'm going to believe God that even if I've been robbed from of 3,000 US dollars, I mean at 10 o'clock last uh, on Friday night, I'm on the phone with the bank to stop the charge. That's how cross I was. And the bank says, sir, was it fraud? Now I'm sitting with a dilemma. Because it's not fraud, I gave them my details. Are, are you with me? So now I'm sitting with a righteous indignation because my word over to the bank is, look, I gave them my credit. Well, sir, if you gave them your credit card, I said, but they can't charge me for anything. The bank says, sir, that's not our problem. And then I start to realize, I'm saying, hold on. This is just something to get me off track. This is just something to shift my focus from what my focus needs to be. Because it's an area in my life that I love, that I'm a, that, that, man, I didn't come to Marco not to have a boat. I mean, you can't live on Marco without a boat. I mean, you've got to have a boat. You know what I'm saying? I didn't choose this lifestyle, you know, not to, not to come to church tanned every Sunday. You know what I'm saying? This is about... This is about something trying to rob me of my faith and my walk in who I am in Christ. And I, and I came to realize, hold on, the just shall live by faith. In other words, devil, you're trying to take $3,000 from me. I'm a tither. I'm a giver. That $3,000 is coming back to me. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. If you try and steal it from me, it's coming back to me. Are, 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 you, are you with me? In other words, I, I've, I've got to believe for the favor of God. I've got to believe for the supernatural provision. I've got to believe in every area of my life that when things come and calamity comes and frustration comes and difficulties come and, and all of these situations come in my life. No, no, hold on. The just shall live by faith. 
Habakkuk 2.4 says the same thing. Galatians 3.11 says the same thing. It's not only once in the Scripture, it's three times. Let me tell you, when my wife speaks three times to me, I've got to listen. <laughs> that means she's got something to say. The same Scripture three times in the Word of God. We only quote it once because we only normally read it once, but it's actually three times in the Scripture. When, 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 when God is giving us, and again, what I love about that is it's not an opinion. It's not just a, a, a thought process. It's not God saying, well, maybe Brooklyn, why don't you live by faith? No, no, God's not speaking like that in the Scripture. It's, it's, it's a command. Remember, we put this exclamation mark here. Do you remember? When we started the series, we put the exclamation mark, become who you are. And, and, and it's not becoming, it's not a journey, it's not something like, well, you, you know, Skylar, well, why don't you do me a favor and just, you know, slowly move over to the faith side. No, that's not what this is about. This is the just shall live by faith. In other words, who's the just? Come on, who's been justified? Who's, who's the just? That we are justified by the blood of the Lamb, by, by what happened on the cross of Calvary. If you know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you are just. All right? You, you have the blood of Jesus flowing in your veins. In other words, therefore, you have no option. You have to live by faith. Joe Connie, you don't have an option. I'm sorry. There is no doubt. There is no fear. There is no second opportunity for you. It is one way only and no other way. We're we, we, we in Holland and I'm, I'm, I'm preaching there and I'm going in a direction, but we're good here. Okay. I, I'm, I'm, I'm preaching in Holland and we're getting to the final day. We've promised everyone we're going to lay hands on them, pray for people. Now, now in Holland, the very interesting thing is land is so valuable and you have to have water retentions, very similar to Florida, the water retention concept uh, that you're all aware of when you build and design. But land is so valuable because they've had to take the ocean as land on Holland with all the dikes, you know, and that's how they created Holland, for those who don't know. Okay, and, um, and, and uh, what are those things? They're dikes, huh? the, the walls, yeah. And, um, and uh, the, 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 there is, it's all reclaimed land, and they've turned it into beautiful pastures and, and all the rest of it, incredible um, uh, to go and see it. But here's the thing. Because land is so valuable, the church, my, my good friends, Edgar and Irma, they, they got a beautiful piece of land, which was miraculous for them, but they had to build on this land and they had to have certain water retentions. So it minimized the footprint of their building. Yet he's got this church that is exploding and this church that is growing. And I mean, you know, at this stage, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's one of the greatest churches in Holland, uh, you know, just on, on what God's doing over there. And... Um, and God gave them the strategy. They built the church on a smaller footprint. They put the water retention around three sides of the church to hold the water. And then they went up like this and they opened it almost like a funnel or like a cone, like this over the water. So in other words, the, 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 they could gain more seating capacity. So, you, you know, if you sit like this and, um, you know, if you could look through the glass, which you can't, or the seat, you know, that you're sitting on, you could be sitting over water. Because the church goes, so the church goes up like this. So, so when you preach in that church and you've got like two and a half thousand people, I think it seats 2,300 or something, jam-packed. But you're preaching there, you're like way down on the stage and you're just looking up forever. I, I mean, you don't want to have the joy of the Lord hit you in the top row and, and be a holy roller. You know, and if you ended up being a holy roller all the way down, I mean, by the time you get to the bottom, uh, we'd have to get the medics. And, uh, and, and, and you can see how it just goes up like that, okay? And it just, it kind of just shoots up and then that photo doesn't really do it justice because it even goes higher. There it is there, okay? Diduam. And uh, I, mean, I mean, incredible facility and the other side, that's what I want to show you. But, but, but that, it's just a beautiful facility how it goes up like that. So we, 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 we're having dinner and um, we're talking now tomorrow, we're going to pray for people being the Monday. We're going to lay hands on everyone. So now we're sitting there and we're saying, how do you pray? for 2,300 people when you have an altar space smaller than what we've got in this facility. It's like, how do you do it? So we were coming up with strategies and we were all talking about, okay, what can we do? What can we do? And, and we're sitting at the table and, and Jenny makes the statement. And, and, and I had to, I, I just smiled at her. And, 
she, 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 we get to the end of this discussion. So she says, she says, okay, that was plan A. What is plan B? And I'm sitting at the table and I do this. How long have you been married to me? <laughs> now, in front of like, like our friends, I said, we've been together 35 years. We've been married 31 years. Have I ever had a plan B? <laughs> and the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me. Yeah. How many of us make plan B? How many of us always have a back door, always have something if faith doesn't work? Come on, get this, what I'm saying. And, 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 and as it hit me, I mean, I just, that was my only comment. I just looked at her and I said, I'd never had a plan B in my life. I only operate plan A my whole life. I'm in plan A. And you say, well, what if something doesn't work? Well, whatever then starts to work becomes plan A. Are you with me? It's still plan A. It's just never going to be entitled plan B. You, you understand? There is no plan B on the inside of me. Amen. All right, it's plan A. It's like when we were there, that was plan A. When we, yeah, it's still plan A. All right, it's not a different plan. It's still the plan of God. It's still His purpose. It's still His word. It's still His desire. And in our lives, that's what faith has to be. Faith has to be the driving force. God says, this is what I want to do in your life. This is my purpose. This is my plan. That's why this church exists. I, I'm, not, I'm not going to listen to voices in the wilderness. I'm not going to listen to negative comments or criticisms or anything. Now, constructive criticism is a different story. And, and when we want to discuss things and fix things, and I'm not talking like that. What I'm talking about is when God speaks to you. You grab a hold of it and you do it and you believe it and you stand in faith with it because if fear comes into your heart, if, 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 if distraction comes into who you are, you will get off God's purpose and plan for your life. You have to stay about God's plan. This is what the life of faith is all about. Now understand, the message of faith is not this movement that we come in and out of. The message of faith is a lifestyle. Those who have heard the faith message, appropriated it in their lives, and then they've turned their back on it. In other words, they, 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 they've heard it, they, they want to do it, and then when it doesn't work, they, 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 they turn their back on it. Listen, those type of people have never truly re received the revelation of faith. Those are people that have, that have never truly understood the Word of God because you can't click in and click out. It's not faith work for me when it's positive. It's faith work for me when calamity, problems, situations come. That's where I need to be strong in my faith. That's where I need to stand firmer than ever before in my life. And when you get a genuine revelation of faith, when you get a genuine understanding, and, and, and when, when faith truly enters into your mind and you get to identify who I am as an individual, everything in your life changes. L living, living by faith is not the suggestion. Living by faith is that command that God has for you and I to be able to, to operate in. And God expects you and I to live that way. Now, look what the Living Translation Bible says in Hebrews 10, 35. It says, And my righteous ones will live by faith, but I will take no pleasure in anyone who turns away. It's a powerful scripture. What does that mean? What does that mean? That means... That when, we got the saying in Africa, I don't know how, if you, if you say it, yeah, but when the poop hits, the fan. Have you, have you ever heard that saying? All right, when the poop hits the fan, you might get sprayed with poop. 
Okay, I, I want to paint this picture to you. Okay, all right. Picture picking up a, now you're all going to look at me and you're going to wonder if you're coming back next Sunday, but picture picking up your hands are full of um, cow poop, you know, a nice fresh one. Throwing it into a fan and the fan does this. I don't know, picture this, this picture of a kid just like getting like sprayed all over. All right? My question to you is this. Are you going to complain about the poop? Or are you going to wipe it off and keep doing what you're doing? That's faith. Are, are you with me? Are you, are you understanding the picture of what I'm wanting you to, wanting you to see? You see, you, you, you'll get people in the church, what they will do is the poop hits them, like, pff, and they got sprayed, like, all over. And, 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 and they'll, they'll walk around for the next six months. They'll come to church looking like that. They'll look like they've got poop all over them, like they've been sprayed. Why? Because their body, their attitude, their personality, their words, everything that is connected with that, everything that is associated with it says, look at me, I've been hit by poop. <laughs> and it's almost like brag value. It's like brag value. Here I am. Look at me. No, no, that's not what we've got to do. What we've got to do is say, hold on, I've taken one, but it's coming off in Jesus' name. It's not going to hold me back. It's not going to keep me from what God you have for me. You have a purpose. You have a plan. You've given me a dream. You've instilled something in my heart. God, we're going to see it come to pass. God, we're going to do it. God, we're going to build out this next facility. God, we're going to see hundreds and thousands come to know Jesus. I've I'm, 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 I want to tell you something. I want you to know this. I want you to know this from the bottom of my heart. Inside of me is something bigger than this building. Yeah. Yeah. This building is only temporary. We're going to work it. We're going to complete it. And I wouldn't be surprised if it becomes our full-time Bible school. But I'm telling you something on the inside of me is bigger inside of me than this building. I'm telling you, the Hertz Arena has got my name. I see it, Faith Arena. I, 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 I see, I want you to understand something. I, you, you can say what you like. I, I tell you, we are, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, we are only here for a temporary period. We are only in this part of the vision for a season. But I'm telling you, there's going to come naming rights to the Hertz Arena. Arena, and it's not going to be yellow anymore. I'm telling you, we're going to change the ugly color first and foremost. And I'm telling you, there's nothing stopping me believing and you believing by faith that we can't call it the faith arena. And if it's not the hurts arena, it could be any arena that God wants to do in our lives. It can be anything that God wants to do. There's going to be an explosion here of thousands and thousands of people. Why? Because of the message of faith. And you are a part of it. You're a part of the vision. So look around you at the empty seats. Look around you. Just get your eyes on this moment and look at them not as empty, but look at them as full. And then look who's here from the beginning. Look who's here in the early formation. Look because, because, because you've got to understand when we have thousands queuing outside, in lines to come in, you're going to be able to say, I was there. I was there because I was there in the beginning. Now you see, that's the point of faith. In your life, when God releases something into your heart by faith, for what is your purpose and plan, and these things come across your path, and these things try and take you out. No, no. I don't want to be one that does not please God. I don't want to be one that drifts away. I don't want to be one that gives up on the word that God has given me. If God has given me a word, I'm going to hold on to it until the end. I'm not quitting. I'm standing stronger than ever before. I don't know what you're facing. I don't know what turmoil is going on in your mind. I don't know where you are at and what you believe in God for. I don't know what washing machine broke down 
what AC unit packed up. I don't know what car problems you've had. I don't know what situation you've been sitting with of things that the enemy brings to get you off point. He brings those things to distract you and to stop you from walking in God's purpose and plan. One John five four. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Put it back on the screens one more time for me, Ryan. Read it with me. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Now pause there. All right, say, for I am born of God. For I am born of God. Okay, you are whatever. For I am born of God. Then put the word in front of overcome. Say, I overcome the world. Come, come, make this a faith declaration. I overcome the world. And this is my victory. And this is my victory. Say it aloud. And this is my victory. Look here. What, 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 what is my victory? I have overcome the world. Say, I have overcome the world. Then, how did I overcome the world? How do I overcome the world? You see there, it says our faith corporately, every single one of us, but I want you to personalize it for this last time. I want you to shout it out. I want you to say how you overcame the situation, the circumstances, everything that the world throws against you. You say these words, say, my faith. My faith caused me to overcome. That, that, that's, what I, that, that's the message today. That's what I want you to get from the heart of God. And I'm telling you, I, I've gone in a... <laughs> if I keep preaching, I'll have you here till this afternoon. But God's delivered what He wanted. Because why? My faith has caused me to be an overcomer. My faith has caused me to be an overcomer. Don't let doubt steal your faith. Don't let fear rob you. Don't let it keep you. Don't let it hold you. Don't let it stop you. Because you've overcome it. And you live victorious because of faith. Because of who I am. When you become who you are, you step in to a victorious life in every area of your life. Even if things come from the world, you are still victorious. Amen? You get something out of that? Amen. I'm going to leave it just there. Hallelujah. 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 You're fighting a battle. You're fighting a situation. You're facing a mountain. Let's just close our eyes. Let's just lift our hands right now. Come on. Just put everything aside. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Put that scripture up one more time, Ryan. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For whatever is born of God, every single one of you with your hands lifted right now, you are a child of the living God. 
I speak over your life right now. You are an overcomer. You are victorious. You have defeated right now with your eyes closed, your hands lifted. I declare over you victory. Victory in the name of Jesus. Victory in your life. Victory in every area of your finances. Victory in your relationships. Victory over your household. Victory in your business right now in the name of Jesus. You are an overcomer. Be it according to your faith in the name of Jesus. I release faith into this house right now. I release faith into every heart right now in the name of Jesus. I, I speak that message of faith into the very core of your belly. I say let the faith of God arise on the inside of you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. All doubt, all fear I rebuke. I take authority over every negative word. I take authority over every negative thing that has plagued your life, that has come against you in the name of Jesus. I rebuke everything that has tried to attack your physical body. I say to your physical body, be healed in Jesus' name. I speak the word of faith over you. I speak it over your arthritis. I speak it over your hearing. I speak it over your eyesight. I speak it over your internal organs. I speak it over your mind. I speak it over everything that is plaguing your body, that womb, that stomach, those lungs. Right now, I speak the blessing of God over you in Jesus' name. And I speak faith into your hearts that you become and that you step into all that God has for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I preached myself happy. I preached myself happy. I, I'm, I'm just going to sit down here and enjoy it for a moment. I mean, I'm, I mean, I think he was a good preacher, Jen, don't you? I mean, I, I mean, I mean, when we go home in the car, we're going to talk about the sermon and how good this preacher was today. It was your I mean, plan A. It, it was my plan A. I tell you something. I preached me a happy place. No three thousand dollars is going to stop me. I'm feeling so naughty with that three thousand dollars. You, you know what I'm saying? I, I just, I, I, no, 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 nothing's going to stop you. You cannot allow circumstances to stop you. you, you are, are you with me? They can't rob your joy. They can't take it away from you. Now, now, now listen, Pastor Steve. You might be upset for a hundred dollars. You can't be. You want to say something? All right, then I will sit down. Uh, it's the blue Just mark. really quick. Um, do you know when you spoke about, <laughs> I know, I, I can't believe I'm going to say this, when you spoke about the poop hitting the fan. Yeah, you got upset with So, uh, you know, it's, it's I immediately when you said, you know, you've got to wipe it off, just shake it off. And it made me think immediately because I've just been studying um, about Jesus when he, remember before he went to the cross and the Bible, the one translation actually says that they blindfolded him and they, they, they mocked him and they threw insults at him and they like really tortured him. And they said, you know, who, are you really the son of God? Like, are you really the son of God? You know, and then they, they did stuff and then they took the blindfold off and they said, okay, prophesy, prophesy, who, who said that to you? You know, and just so mocked and belittled him. And I mean, knowing Jesus and what he must have felt at that moment, I mean, the, the poop really hit the fan on him right at that moment. But the word says that he literally shook it off. Come he on, actually shook on, off right. the insults. He shook off that attack on him, attack on everything he was. And then he quoted what God told him. And he used the word for his point of faith. Remember, he was a man. That's right. He was a man. And he endured all those things as a man. But what brought him through is this. He said, let me tell you, from this point on, I will be seated at the right hand of the Father. Isn't that awesome? 
And it made me think about when things, after God has given us a promise, after He's, he's told us that if you are my righteous, I will not let you be forsaken. When he's, He said in John chapter 1 verse 16, He spoke so clearly about how because we are in Him, He promised to give us grace upon grace, spiritual on, blessing upon on, spiritual blessing, favor upon favor, gift heaped upon gift. If that is His promise to us, but things happen in the natural, they want to steer us off course. They want us to speak negatively out of our mouths against the promise of God. It was so easy for Jesus to slip into that place just for one little moment, you know, but He didn't. He didn't. He shook it off and He held on to the promise. Right after this moment, I will be seated at the right come hand on, of the come Father. Come on, come on. Hallelujah. And that is our faith. That is our glory, faith. Glory, glory. Now, now, I, I, I don't know about you. It's just... Come on, I'm just going to... I'm going to just shake off the... The, 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 the everything. Come on, I... Some of you stand to your feet. Just do this. Just come on. Just quickly. Just give it a bit of, give it a shake there, Joe. Come on. Just shake it off. Where are these kids? Give it a shake right there. All right. Come on. Shake off the world. Shake off the junk. Shake off the negativity. Shake off the, the stuff that's like, just, uh, some of you need a good shake. This is, they've always called us the holy rollers and shakers. So come on. I, I mean, have a good shake for a change. This is who we are. This is who we are. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo! Glory. Take your seats. Hallelujah.